What in the world was Mike Gundy doing yesterday at Big 12 Media Days? Well, we'll try and sort that out. And uh, that's about it on today's episode of the Big 12 Watch. This is Josh Neighbors here. Crystal Ball College Football is the channel. Big 12 Watch is the show. 365 Sports is the big time brand. You all can find this show wherever you guys get your podcasts. And on YouTube as well, I gave some thoughts yesterday about the Big 12 and potential new TV windows that they could be exploring, which I thought was a pretty interesting talking point. Uh, Brett, your remarks say, hey, they could move out of the current TV window that they're in right now. I think, you know, some of the current ones they've got right now, uh, Friday nights, things like that. We, we discussed that on yesterday's show, so go and check that out. Uh, we're having the team previews coming up next week as well. So busy, busy times here. On the show, the folks, the all the folks from 365 are out at the uh, Big 12 Media Days here back in Arkansas, giving you all some fun reactions to all of these things. Once again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Those are the ways you guys can help support us. So uh, I touched on this yesterday. I hadn't seen all the comments, but the big story I talked about yesterday was was Ollie Gordon not being suspended. The big story coming out of yesterday was what in the world Mike Gundy was doing. And so I want to establish a couple things first. All right. So if you've not seen it, go and read Mike. Mike Gundy made a variety of comments yesterday. He said Ollie Gordon would not be suspended. He said that they're going to punish him internally. He said that his job is also to do what's best for Oklahoma State football. He also said that, hey, uh, I might punish him by making him take 50 carries. He also said, um, you know, try to justify it in some ways, but said, hey, you know, the legal limit's 0 0.08 and, you know, it's just the body weight. So for Ollie, maybe not too much over the limit. And then, also saying, you know, who hasn't driven with uh, three or four beers in the system? And then also said, you know, done it you know, a thousand times, whatever it was. And uh, the issue here, like, I'm I'm not going to, like, we're not trying to cancel Mike Gundy. I really like Mike Gundy a lot. I, I think he's a great character to have. You know, I don't agree on very much, but, you know, like politically and whatnot, but like, I think he's a damn good football coach. And even football, actually, don't agree. And he does just stuff out of the blue, man, where it's just really, really damaging. Uh, to himself and into his career at times, not to his career, but like just like to, sometimes to his teams. Like last year, playing three quarterbacks, you know, I just felt like it was the wrong move and they should have picked one a lot faster and just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And so they picked one and made a lot of, you know, it ended up working out pretty well for him, but they just didn't pick one. They needed to pick one. And not allowing Spencer Sanders back kind of created that problem and it made a lot of sense and it didn't work out for Spencer and it actually didn't really work out for Oklahoma State. You know, Spencer was their most important player a couple of years ago, the year when he got hurt like halfway through it. He was your best offensive player, really important to them. And he was playing a really, he had a really good season to that point too. And uh, so, you know, just kind of odd decisions sometimes that Mike Gundy has made. The OAN thing, you know, is strange. And obviously there's a man on 40, rocks the beat of his own drum. He's a very, very good coach. We all know that. This is not me trying to fire him at all. What I didn't understand yesterday was... If Ollie Gordon is at media days and he has decided to come and he is there in part to help answer for what has happened, Mike Gundy, all he has to say is Ollie Gordon will not be, miss any game time. We are going to handle the punishment internally. Or actually, I might even have to say if he's going to miss any games. He could just say, we're going to handle the punishment internally. Um, you know, and, and I think eventually, you know, once the first couple games roll around, you could say something, but you know, you could say he won't be suspended. We're going to handle the punishment internally in house. Um, you know, my job is to look after Oklahoma state football. It's best for us if he plays. I also think Ollie can learn his lesson without playing. That's part of the reason why he's here is that, you know, he needs to be taking, you know, difficult questions about, you know, the action, you know, his actions that he took. And he needs to be responsible for that. And so that's part of the reason why I know we hope you all ask him, be, be respectful when you talk to him and I'm here to defend him. He's a good kid. You know, he made a mistake. We all make mistakes, uh, you know, but he's a good kid. He's here to answer those questions. You know, you all have a right to ask him tough questions, but be fair to him as well when you ask him those tough questions. And uh, that's why, you know, in part is here today and I'm here to talk about our season, not just one player. He's a part of that, obviously a big part of that, but I'm not here to talk about one player. It's really what he needed to do. And he, in, in that moment, he could have, you know, basically been standing up for his guy saying, hey, you know, be fair to him. I want you all to be fair to my player. Uh, you know, we've been supporting him and whatnot, and I appreciate him trying to defend him, but he could have defended him with that comment. You know, I think people would have liked the accountability if he was like, he's here to answer questions. That's part of him being here and learning to be a leader, learning to be a responsible human being. 
You know, that's what we're trying to teach here on this football team, this program. That's what he had to do. And he didn't do that. And um, that, but that's the part that bothers me is that he, he could not make it easy on himself. Like he could have made this whole process much easier on himself. If he just didn't say anything at all, like, like it didn't say anything trying to defend his player about, well, you know, I've always driven with a few beers in me and whatnot. It's like, here's also the issue. I'm going to get technical about it. It's not how much Ollie was drinking. He's not allowed to drink. He's not legally allowed to drink. Look, do I think if you can fight and die for this country, you should be able to drink? Yes. But you know what? The drinking age is not 21. It's eight. It's, it's not 18. The drinking age is 21. All right. That's what it is. And so now you've got a situation where Mike Gundy is getting ridiculed for this. And rightfully so. Like I, I've got no problem with them deciding not to suspend Ollie Gordon. It's he's their player, right? He's in that program. He is Mike Gundy is the unquestioned leader of that program. And he, he can hold his players accountable how he chooses to, you know, I, you know, I don't have to agree that all the time, but he, that that's, he's within, within his rights, you know, like, you know, legally, like stuff will take care of itself legally. And when it comes to football, you know, he needs to make sure Ollie learns a lesson. I also do think being at media days and answering those questions is part of that. So I'm glad he's there. Gundy just doesn't like, does not need to open his mouth as much as he does, but he continually chooses to do so. And it's like, dude, come on. Like, it's, that's the hard part. It's, I'm not trying to cancel my Gundy. We got a bunch of texts on our radio show today where people are like, you guys try to can't, you know, try to cancel my Gundy. People try to cancel him. He's talking about the truth. It's like, look, okay. It, whether or not you can drive on three or four beers and litigating the alcohol level is like, you know, factually correct or not, whatever. What Ollie Gordon was doing was illegal on multiple fronts. He was driving with open alcohol in the car. It looked like he was swerving lanes. And also he is underage. He's not allowed to legally drink. So there's no reason to be trying to litigate this stuff. All right. And we're not going to cancel him for it. It's not a legal stand up for your player. It's just dumb, especially if the player is there to stand up for himself in some ways. And also to, you know, to be like, I'm, I'm a good guy and also take accountability for what he did. And so it doesn't make any sense. Like Ollie is there to do that. You can do that in some ways, but you don't have to start like taking the specific steps about listing off BACs and talking about how much you weigh and how many times you've done something to defend him. It doesn't make much sense. And once again, Drinking and driving is is the culprit of numerous deaths in this country every single year, regardless of state. It goes across, you know, racial lines, age lines, whatever. Like people get involved in really bad drunk driving accidents. I'm, I'm not sure if it happens, you know, daily in this country. Like, but like, I mean, probably almost daily. I know people who have been killed. You know, I know people who have killed people in, in, in my communities in multiple places. You know, drunk driving accidents, they're terrible. That's why you should always be alert while driving. And so for, I understand why Mike Gunny's doing this, but like, this is a topic where Ali needs to learn his lesson and being out in public and having to deal with those questions is part of learning the lesson. You don't need to litigate this for him. He has to learn on his own. He needs to learn the hard truth and I get it, but you're not doing yourself any favors, you're not doing your program any favors Here's the thing. He's pretty Teflon. Like he's really good at like handling, you know, blocking out that noise. Sometimes he needs to listen to the noise. I mean, I think the folks who were like, pick a quarterback, pick a quarterback, pick a quarterback were right as it was evident during the three touchdown or your multi-touchdown loss against South Alabama last year. Uh, you know, Hey, maybe bring Spencer Sanders back. They definitely could have needed him both for Spencer and for the program. They were picking between three quarterbacks last year. And Hey, it would have been good enough for you. The guy you started a bunch of games for you would have been just fine. Didn't go in that direction. Obviously, OAN stuff being outspoken there didn't always you know, help him as well, right? And like I, some sometimes the game decisions have have hurt him. I think, uh, you know, their usage of Colin Oliver at times has you know been I've been I think an interesting uh, test case of that. You know uh, how much they ran. I think Jalen Warren at times was a test case of this, where it's like, hey man, you might want to save some bullets for guys like Hubbard and guys like Warren. You know, sometimes you can't just you know full them up with carries because end of the year, big games, like the big 12 championship game might not be ready to go. Right. So there have been times in this year, the transfer portal, Hey, maybe go get a new quarterback. Like we talked about still like the guys built an amazing program. He's a really, really good coach and players love playing for him. And he's not, not the, always the easiest guy to play for. It seems like, but you know, he, he does learn his lesson sometimes. And sometimes he compromises, you know what I mean? 
Like he picked a quarterback last year and think he realized he probably should have picked one earlier. OAN thing. He realized he made a mistake. You know, talk to Chuba Hubbard and they were able to clear things up together. Now, I, I think all of that stuff, like he will admit when he is wrong sometimes. And so uh, I think with this, people, I hope people are always learning and growing as, as people. I think Mike Gundy realizes, like, I don't need to defend the kid. I don't have to relitigate this out there. I might be the bit, you know, the big dog and the big 12 when it comes to coaches, but I don't have to do this. That's my big issue. It just, he just didn't, it was just unnecessary. I'm not trying to cancel him. He just didn't have to do it. It's like, why foot in mouth? For what reason? You just don't have to be doing it. Uh, I think that was kind of a, a big, like, takeaway yesterday. Uh, for media days was just, you just didn't have to do it. It'll all die down by the start of the football season. It's not really that big of a deal in the end of the day. You know, as long as, as Ollie learns his lesson, we don't see his have, you know, being a reoccurring issue. And look, we were all in college. You know, I, you know, I made bad decisions in college too. Not like that bad decisions, but I mean, you know, I made some bad decisions in college too. And uh, you know, like we all have to pay the consequences for it. Um, you know, that's, that's part of the deal. And so Ollie has to pay those consequences. Hopefully he learns his lesson. He's a public figure, so he has to answer for it a bit more. I appreciate Gundy trying to stick up for him, but it was a bit unnecessary given the circumstances and given the fact that Ollie was there with him. Hopefully they learn. But Oklahoma State still like their chances maybe to win the Big 12, which they have a better quarterback. Uh, and Alan Bowen was there, man, and he is he's one of the two rental, the rental car quarterbacks in the Big 12, right between him and Cam Rising, rental car QBs. Going to be a story in the league this year. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at NWPod365. You guys can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. Find the show wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. All right, folks, we will talk at you all manana.